Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Man, away we go, everyone. Brian Sussman out here on the left coast filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. It's always a pleasure, always an honor to get behind this microphone. Of course, Michael and I share a couple things in common. Uh, Michael built the station that I'm on. I host a morning show on KSFO in San Francisco. You hear a lot of callers to this program from KSFO in San Francisco, good people. Michael started his radio broadcasting career in the 90s on KSFO, built this station. Literally, I mean, that's like the old, that's like the old uh, song. We built this city on rock and roll. Let me tell you something. He built this station on Borders Language Culture. And I've been a part of the broadcast lineup since 2002. Before that, I was in television and used to listen to Michael Savage's show regularly. And uh, and here I am behind his microphone. You know, I woke up this morning. I was just amped and ready for a great broadcast day. Four hours with my listeners in the Bay Area. Three hours with Michael's listeners nationwide. I was all excited, ramped up, ready, charged up. And then there were three bits of news that just wrecked my day. And interesting, they all have something to do with that curious religion of peace. Now, before we get going in the program, let's just set the table with some facts. The phone number, you want to call in, 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. For all the latest news of the day, it's a terrific website. I highly recommend it, michaelsavage.com. When you're at michaelsavage.com, also don't forget to pre-order the upcoming book. It's going to be out in just a couple weeks. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. When you don't have borders, you don't have a language, and you don't have a government, what do you have? So you can pre-order Michael Savage's upcoming blockbuster now. So again, michaelsavage.com for that and Michael's newsletter. Just go there and sign up. It comes out several times a week. Okay, so the table's set nicely. Let's back up. Start my broadcast day, preparing for the show. I wake up very, very early. I start my broadcast day during the 3 o'clock hour out here on the left coast. First thing I find out about is this Saudi guy. Now, this has been in the works for a long time, but now it's happened. So you've got the worst of the worst at Gitmo, the worst of the worst at Gitmo being released back to his home of Saudi Arabia where he's going to undergo rehabilitation. Let me tell you about this guy. He is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Freed from Gitmo. Transferred back to Saudi Arabia. I, I, I'm looking at his dossier, so to speak. Now, according to our Department of Defense, this guy, now, of course, what you'll hear from the liberal media, what you'll hear from the apologists, what you'll hear from the administration, well, there were no criminal charges against this man. He'd been sitting in a cell for the last, uh, since 2000-whatever. He's been on a hunger strike for nine years. Hey, by the way, how's that hunger strike working for him? If he was really on a hunger strike, he would have been dead in a few days. But I digress, as I often do, especially when I get behind this microphone. My point is, you read what the DOD said about this guy. He was a member of Al-Qaeda. Not an alleged member, a member of Al-Qaeda. A long-term bodyguard for Osama bin Laden. Besides that, he studied Sharia law in college. He taught the Quran to school kids in Afghanistan. He was well-trained in hand-to-hand combat. Of course, that's what you'd expect from a a bodyguard, right? And on top of that, he'd been uh, involved in a plan to carry out big-time suicide missions involving, involving U.S. airliners in Southeast Asia. This guy was bad, hardened to the core, 
Oh, and by the way, he wasn't just one of those disaffected poor people that gets involved with the cause because he's got nothing else in life. He was a very he comes from a very wealthy Saudi family. So now we're taking him back to Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah, let him go home. He's going to be rehabilitated by the Saudis, our allies for peace. So that was the first story that got me going, and I have a lot more to say about this. But let me just set the table in terms of how my life got together this morning. So that was the first punch in the gut. And, and isn't it interesting, we find this out on the day when the Pope is sucking up all the oxygen in the news cycle. Oh, the Pope's having his first Mass in the United States. Great, great. By the way, it was just, it was absolutely, which I shouldn't be amazed. You see that Josh Ernest, the, the parrot's, uh, the, the president's spokes parrot, he's out there talking, and he, he's literally comparing Obama to the Pope. Oh, they have so much in common. Okay, so you got that story. Then, then, the little uh, clock boy, the clock boy, the 14-year-old clock boy from Texas. You know this story, right? This guy's in the San Francisco Bay Area yesterday. Oh, he's being celebrated like a hero. Heroes welcome for the little 14-year-old Muslim clockmaker. Have you seen pictures of this clock? That clock, if this, cl- if his quote-unquote clock wouldn't scare the beep-boop out of anybody, Anybody in a school, I got news for you, that person shouldn't be teaching school. In this post-Columbine world, are you kidding me? And all this kid did was, all he did was, and I believe he was put up by his activist old man to do this. Oh, that's right, his activist old man. Now, can I tell you something? This kid basically took apart an electronic clock and gave it a new, a new cover, gave it new skin, so to speak. He put it inside what they're saying was a pencil case. I've never seen a pencil case like this in my life. It looked like a briefcase. He took an electronic clock, took the cover off of it, put it in a briefcase, and did his darndest to make that thing look like a bomb. He didn't invent anything. He didn't create anything. He took the wrapping off of a clock and put it in a briefcase and made it look like a bomb. He comes to the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, he's celebrated at Google. He goes into San Francisco, gets a little tour of San Francisco, gets an in and out burger. And then he goes to Google. It happened to be their, uh, their Young Scientist Day. They had a contest for all these young scientists, kids about his age, sponsored by Scientific American and Google. And he tweets out, going to Cali. Sightseeing in San Francisco, goes to In-N-Out Burger, then goes to, with all these science-loving teens from around the world at the Googleplex. Can I tell you something? He did squat. He took the cover off of a clock. Some of these other kids who were there really did stuff. One kid created a new way to detect Ebola. Uh, one was working with Alzheimer's. These are all teenagers. One was helping with clean drinking water. All worthy projects. But how did this kid get there? Oh, can't do anything to offend anybody from the religion of peace. We got to welcome him and celebrate him because we're so sensitive and politically correct. And guess what? That sensitivity and politically correct attitude is going to kill this country. Borders, language, culture. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, we'll talk more about that. Oh, and then, here we go, the trifecta. So, again, this is all... This is. This is all happening as I'm preparing for my morning show in San Francisco, knowing I'm going to be doing seven hours of radio. I'm all excited. The wind's taken out of my sails, although we do have a lot to talk about. But I don't like talking about this kind of stuff. This is terrible. Okay, then this, then this. Okay, so I'm talking to all of you all across the nation and the world because this is the number one streaming program pretty much in the world. So some of you live in New Jersey, you know this story better than I do. Apparently there's a school district in New Jersey that said, no, we're not going to give you Muslims a special holiday. We're not going to do it. And so there's this big meeting, right? Some of you may have been there. There's this big meeting, and the school district says, no, we're not going to give you the special holiday. Well, trust me, they want spe- they'd want they like to get rid of Christmas and Easter and you know, they'd, they'd like to get rid of it all. They want their way of the highway. That's the way the, these people operate. Just look at history. And, we'll, and I'll walk through the history for you a little bit later in the program here on the Savage Nation. But the bottom line is, 
you have all of these people at this uh, this meeting at the school, and let me tell you something. They are Muslim activists, and they're saying things like, guess what, someday we're going to be the majority. Those are threats. But, see, threats based on history because this is what they've done throughout history. Uh, they, If they can't beat you, if they can't beat you with the sword, they'll beat you with the womb. Listen to this one lady. Do you guys have this? L- listen to this. This is We're one no lady speaking mi- at the meeting. Take take a listen. We're no longer the minority. That's clear from tonight. We're going to be the majority soon. That's a threat. Okay, this is this is the transformation of America, folks. Nobody believed him, Barack Hussein Obama, when he said it, did they? Well, some of us did. But, but even those of us who believed it had no idea what was going to be happening before our very eyes. This is the fundamental transformation of not just America, but the world. The world. 855-400-7282. I can't wait to hear from you throughout the course of the time that we have together here on The Savage Nation. I've got some other stories in the news, obviously. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Dr. Ben Carson won't back down on that Muslim remark. He won't back down. And God bless him for it. God bless him for it. Now, Carly Fiorina, who's from the San Francisco Bay Area, I watched her as a businesswoman for years out here. And she had a few years that were controversial, and she had some years that were great. But, you know, for her to say that Ben Carson is wrong because the Constitution says this, that, or the other, she's wrong. Because as an individual in this country who is a citizen and who is registered to vote, I can base my vote on a number of factors, including one's religion. I have the right to do that. Now, when it comes to government and appointments thereof, religion's not to be used as any sort of test or litmus test whatsoever. But as a voter, I can do whatever I want. And that's where Ms. Fiorina is just absolutely wrong. Trump also comes out, and Trump says regarding the Syrian refugees, zero. Zero. Wants none. None whatsoever. So we're going to be talking about that as well. I'm glad to be here with you. Brian Sussman, filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Love being on this, The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman here filling in. So we've been talking about the religion to peace. This is how Michael would say it. The religion of peace, right? That's how we'd say it. The religion of peace. And we don't want to offend anybody. Because the religion of peace is bringing peace throughout the world. Where, where, where was the Pope today? I mean, I, mean the, I know where the Pope was, and I know where he is. But let me see. Just kind of going through the Pope's teachings, or his speaking today. Um... Here he is. Oh, this is the one I'm looking for. We'll get to some calls in just a second. Pope Francis calls on the world to protect the vulnerable. Protect the vulnerable. This is clip 12, guys. Let's play it right now. I would like all men and women of God will in this great nation to support the efforts of the international community to protect the vulnerable you know in our world and to stimulate integral and inclusive models of development so let's um protect the vulnerable in our world and stimulate integral and inclusive morals of development all right so mr pope i'm just asking you this right now i can't call you mr pope can't i can't i or would you like Pope E? P O P E? What would you like? I'll, I'll tell you. I'm not going to call you Holy Father because there's only one Holy Father and he's in heaven. But that's just me because I'm not Catholic. Uh, did I just offend a large portion of the audience? Sorry. But, Mr. Pope, uh, I'm just going to ask you this question. Um, just in the last week alone, 28 jihadist attacks around the world. What have you said about that? 289 people died last week at the hands of Islam. Talk to me. 583 injured. Come on, Pope, I want to hear something. 
Want to hear something? Oh, 